Hey everybody, thank you for visiting with me over at Recycled Cottage and Garden. And today it's rainy outside, so I thought I'd show you a little bit about my genealogy binder and how I set it up. <clears throat> Excuse me. I've been doing genealogy for over 35 years, and I have decided to... Uh, update my binders. My three ring binders are really in sad shape at this point um, and overly stuffed and I've got way too many notes that have not been organized. <coughs> Excuse me. So this is my first one I'm working on. This is the first line I ever worked on. It's my maternal grandmother's line. Uh, her maiden name was Hawthorne. And let me tell you a little bit about the uh, front cover here. This is a binder, which it probably won't stay in this one because I think it's going to be too small, but it was one that I had. Um, so I'm just starting with that. And it has one of those slip covers in it. And what I did was to go to Google Image Search and I put in the family name, say Hawthorne, followed word by the word logo. That brought up some logos, and I chose the one I liked for each name. I'm not technical, so I cut and pasted, uh, printed them out the size I wanted, cut and pasted to fit on one page, and then just did a scan of it and printed it out and slid the paper inside the front cover. Now, all of these are logos except for one. The one I'm closing in on here, which says Greer Jewelers. That's actually a photo of the sign that hung above the door at the Greer Jewelers that was um, belonged to family members in Virginia. This is what I do. I start with the main line, in this case Hawthorne, and I use a cardstock. Um, I chose kind of an ivory uh, look uh, to one. Sorry for the jiggling. And here. the form I use is one uh, put out years ago by the Everton Publishing Company which does a lot of genealogical publishings. And I like this one. I got this from a friend um, who really got me turned on to doing genealogy, showed me how to start. Um, because you can put the husband's name, the wife's name, and all of their pertinent inf info, birth, christening, marriage, death, where they're buried, where they lived, what their occupations were, um, so on and so forth. And then, and these are eight and a half by 11 sheets. And so down on this page, let me go back out, there we go. You'll see that there is room on this first page for 10 children. Now there's each, also a second page that which goes, has room for more children on this family group sheet. Um, I actually went to find a place where I can download the uh, group sheets. I did find some, so if anybody wants me to email them a copy of these family group sheets, I have those saved in my computer, and I can mail those, email them to someone if they want to try this. But I like that because I can put, I think it's like 20-some children up all together. Um, that I can list, which is good if you have someone who was married multiple times. Um, oops, went too far. Uh, you can do multiple uh, wives or husbands listed, and there's not a whole lot of room on the first page to do that. So what I do following that is... I create just a little uh, Word document. There we go. And I just title it with the husband's full name and then add the word family. In this case, it's William James Hawthorne Family. 
And so the first paragraph is going to be about William. Um, in this case, you know, which censuses I found him on and um, who's listed, you know, what he did for a living kind of thing, so on and so forth. And then you'll see below that I do the, the uh, children's name in red and it's indented once. And that will have pertinent information I wasn't able to put um, on the main page on the family group sheet and that would be like uh, the wife's information. And then below that I'll have the children's names indented yet again and their names are in blue. And then I put a little bit of information about the children that I find that may be interesting. Uh, you can do as much or as little as you want and as many or as few uh, as you want. Okay, now the next thing that I do after I get all of the family information done is I'll add in photographs um, or forms and things that I find. Now these are all scans that I've done and printed out. I don't have actual photographs in here. Um, I do have some funeral notices when I don't have photographs of somebody or sometimes even when I do. I will find at findagrave.org um, the uh, gravestones. A lot of them have pictures and I'll take and print generation those out I'm concerned with. If I have copies of documents I put those in and those were marriage licenses. We're going back yet again one more time. I'm getting better at let me show you this real quick. You is a place to put where you got your information. I give them a letter instead of a number because it, you know with dates it's just too confusing. So I use a letter and I've gotten much much better when at the beginning I didn't really do this. And you'll see over here I also write down the letter. So this one is for Frances Redshaw that she was born around or circa 1814 in Washington County, Virginia. And I have three sources where that information came from. Some sources are better than others. There we go. You can see those green letters there. There's a G and an L. Those are the sources. I've gotten much better. Um, when I type these up that I put in the source of that where that information came from just so and here's some more items that I pulled off the internet like some death certificates and more gravestones I just print them off in the size that I want and stick them to a piece of paper I do put all of the photographic kind of stuff just to keep it from snagging on things, I put it inside one of those clear plastic page protector. You, those are really cheap, like at Walmart. Sometimes you can even find family photos online that you didn't know existed, and that's always fun to put a face to it. I can actually see some resemblance um, in some of the faces, so that's always kind of fun. And you know, each successive generation going backwards, it's the same process. The main page, the little biographical, and then the, the photographs and, and charts. Okay, this particular family information sheet has a lot of notes on it, um, and it's rather messy looking, but this is what I do. Once I have a whole lot of these notes, then I go back to my saved document and I correct or add in that information and go forward from there. And this page, uh, I've got a couple of them here on this particular person. I have a distant cousin who did a lot of research and he created a document that lines out this man's life year by year and it'll have where he bought land, where he sold land um, this one shows where his age, what his age was in a particular year 
uh, where a son got married, a wife got married, somebody died, just all kinds of interesting information just in a year-by-year -year, uh, way of laying it out. Okay, <clears throat> so this is my main binder that I started with. This is a three inch binder. And I have, what I do normally is I put the main line that I'm following backwards, very first thing in the front. And then behind that are the other branches of the family taken from the female side and then following her line back. And I list them alphabetically. I do them al alphabetically. So I use tabs. Um, Allen, Barney, Bosworth, and so forth. And I start out with uh, plain paper until I have enough information that I think I can go ahead and put it on the uh, cardstock be a little more permanent because these tear so easy. And I add in notes and anything else I can find. Um, a lot of these are, this line goes back to Massachusetts and so forth. Um, in this book, what I've done is because I have some lines that go back beyond the shores of America. This book is only for the Hawthorne line and its branches. Only goes back to who came ashore in America, who immigrated to America, and their main line backwards. I have another binder that is strictly those, the, the all the different lines that go back um, to into Europe. Now, one thing interesting is I have three coal families. They all they're all different lines. They all enter and marry. So I have coal one, coal two, and coal three. Three coal lines. That took me a long time to sort out. Don't ask me about the Hatfields on my dad's side. I'm still working on that one. Um, but, you know, I, I print stuff off the internet. Um, I have two Larimer families. I make copious notes. Lots of notes when I find something new. And they all go in here. This is what I'm working on sorting out at this point. Extra stuff back there. Um, so that's how, and you see how easily these tear, which is why I'm going to use the uh, cardstock. It will last a lot longer. Now, the binder that I currently have Hawthorne in will probably be replaced with a brand new 3-inch binder because I'm going to need it. Um, but this will condense down somewhat because all the notes will eventually be gone through and put in place. So this is how I start this, and this is just one notebook. This is my grandma, my maternal grandmother's line. I have one from my paternal grandfather's line. I have one for my paternal side, the grandmother's, and the grandfather's line. And then I have uh, two more. One for my father's side, which goes back into Europe, and one for my mother's side, which goes back into Europe. So far. And that's probably as far as I'm going to get. So, that's that one.